Hi, I'm Tom Weinman with Clean Energy Design is my company and um, we got involved with uh, Race Point Light long ago when they decided they wanted to have energy made from renewable sources and we started with uh, Don Root and Jim Walker and uh, we first planned for an uh, electric system because they wanted to not have to use their diesel generator every day to provide their power. So we started with a photovoltaic system, which is two kilowatts, and a battery bank and an inverter in the basement, which we'll see later. And then a few years later, we supplemented with a wind generator to also provide electricity. And that allowed them to expand the use of the keeper's house to also use the whistle house for accommodations. And then uh, the latest version is the panels behind the solar, uh, the photovoltaic, solar electric, and those are solar thermal panels, and that avoids using propane for heating hot water, as well as uh, providing some supplemental heat to the keeper's house in the shoulder season. Okay, so this is the heart of the system. It's an inverter which converts the power from the renewable energy sources outside to the common household power that we use in the keeper's house and as well as the whistle house. So that, um, it, and it's fed off of a battery bank here, which is a large enclosed space, uh, enclosed bank of batteries. And those keep the system up and running night and day and for cloudy times and for windless periods when we don't have sources of power. Uh, the inverter converts the power from the sources outside, the photovoltaics and the wind, or the battery bank, and it converts it into the power for the lights and other appliances that are used by guests and the keepers at the lighthouse here, as well as the whistle house that we saw earlier. The uh, power is fed out to a meter, which we just happen to keep a recording of all the power that we're using here, just like a regular home, and it's through a standard distribution panel that often people have in their basement. There's charge controllers for the battery bank for both the solar and for the wind generator, which is on the other side of the house panel. And then we have additional um, equipment beyond that for the solar thermal that you saw for storing hot water. And we'll look at those in a minute. Okay, I'll show a little closer view of the wind generator control, which is this box here which has an emergency stop button, and then also a charge controller similar to the photovoltaics we saw a minute ago. These duck under and work with the inverter and bypass the house panel at this point and go to the batteries. The uh, wind generator control is a little bit different than photovoltaic panels in that if you have a very charged up battery bank and you're not using much power, we need to actually create a load on the wind generator to protect it from damage if it was providing a lot of power on a windy night when there was no power being used. So it has a heater unit over here that's against the solar thermal cistern. That just happens to be a load that the can, can be switched by the controller and this heats up and provides a load on the generator if there is a windy night and no need for other power. Excellent. Could you explain about the cistern and how the water goes out, out to the panels? Yeah, well, we can move around this way to uh, look at the, the cistern for the hot water system. So I'm standing in what was a secondary cistern from the original uh, keeper's house, and these were filled by rainwater that was directed in by the, um, by the water, the gutters on the house of the keeper's house. And the original cistern is back here from the original house, and both of these were predating running water through a well water system. So they were sources of water for the keeper's house when they didn't have a water well and a pump. Uh, what we've done is converted this first cistern into a large insulated tank and repurposed it to hold a bath or a battery of solar water and solar hot water. And what we have is a set of pumps here that pumps the water from the bottom of the cistern out to the panels and that's governed by a controller that senses the temperature on the panels and the temperature in the bottom of the cistern. So when the temperature on the panels, when the sun comes up and goes on the panels, gets warmer than the bottom of the cistern, these pumps will turn on. 
if a cloud comes by or the sun goes lower in the sky or it's cold out, then the pumps will automatically shut off, leaving this circulated water staying warm in the insulated tank. And then what we have is a set of copper pipes that go into the tank that hold our hot water, our domestic water from the house. This is in the water pipes. That goes into big copper coils that are sitting in the bath of solar thermal water. And that will preheat all that water as it comes flowing through the pipes as you use it at the sink or the showers. And that heats your water. That's converted in a manifold and it also goes out at this point. This is the domestic hot water manifold. It's strictly for um, you know, domestic hot water, showers, baths, uh, washing dishes, that sort of thing. And this can either direct it through here directly to your use if it's a sunny day, I mean if it's a warm summer period, or if it's the shoulder season or heating season when we have the boiler on, we can direct it to have a backup of hot water from the boiler system that was previously here. How Was it a problem getting through the walls that are a foot thick? Or did you? We had some very interesting times drilling big holes in these uh, thick cistern walls and the thick foundation walls. And it was quite a challenge to put the system in, but we had some nice uh, diamond core drills, so that worked out pretty well. Excellent. Considering this house has been here since 1816. Yes. No, 1870, 18, 1876. 1876. Yeah. So in addition to doing domestic water, which I just described about the coils of uh, copper to bring the domestic hot water out to the house. We also have a secondary coil of uh, copper in there to bring water to the heating system for the shoulder season when you're trying to warm the house up and you got a lot of sun in the springtime or the early fall. And there's a second controller here which brings heat from a third coil on, in the tank over to our heating system. Um, I mentioned earlier when we when it was heating season and the solar might not be all the way hot for a hot shower, this is the indirect fire hot water tank that's run from a boiler to sort of finish heat the water that's already been preheated from the solar. That's for domestic uses for the shower and so forth. And then the last piece I was talking about over there was a, um, a takeoff for heating the house. And we piped that into the regular heating system here. It's a, it's a separate branch off the heating system. And that will bring hot water from the preheated from the tank through that coil into the heating system so that the boiler doesn't have to fire to run hot water out to the house, to the baseboard, the regular heating system of the house when the thermostat calls.